Welcome to The Farming Show, your platform for all farming related matters. Today we're back yet again in the southeast of Johannesburg, speaking to Untlandla from Notelo Trading Agricultural Farm. And our topic today is all about supply and demand. We want to know who's his customer space, where did he get the offtake markets from, and how he's been trading with different customers and learning the trade of selling fresh produce. Let's take a deep dive into our topic for today. Ndlandla, you've established a sustainable market. How did you go about accessing markets where we know today that a lot of small-scale farmers say they struggle with markets? Yeah, so what we normally do, we just, we are foot, 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 foot soldiers and we literally knocking on door to door, asking for markets from your different places, your chisanyamas, your buy and price, your pick and pays. But it's not easy, hey? We, we are always struggling for new markets. We're always looking for new markets. So it's not a, a one-day job where you just come in and go. Yeah. It's, a, it's a constant thing on, on a day-to-day day -day basis where you are actually going to where you buy your groceries and you ask to see the manager and you, you have those conversations with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, yeah. I see that we, you've brought on a friend as well. Perhaps can you introduce him to, to us and tell us how do you guys work together? Okay, yeah. So my guy here is Mzo. Um, what we normally do is whatever we take like as in uh, chicken manure we bring to them on the crop side and they use it as fertilizer and they share their markets with us as well because we are strictly based on um, broilers mm. so they are also teaching us as well on, on, on vegetables and since we are also looking into expansion mm. we, we are looking from them or rather they are mentoring us in, in how they work on tunnels and greenhouses and all that. Okay. Mzo, welcome to the Farming Podcast. I see that we're standing in one of your tunnels and we see spinach right here. How did you go about establishing and finding your own market? If you could tell us a little bit about that journey. Uh, in market, is it all, uh, like it must be again, if I mean, it's uh, challenging just to sell door to door. But um, while we grow, it's cooler. Then uh, we decided to go to see because the produce is cooler, but it's spinach, it's Then you can sell uh, maybe 100 punches a day in door to door. We need to get someone who's a starter, uh, as Tengi say. You understand? Yeah. Uh, so, some, when a friend is referring to, to take it to a city deep market. Yes. Yeah, sorry for my. When a friend is referring to a city deep market, but a city deep market, si some people if you go to a spinach, it's a short. Yes, if you want to see then you see the things like pick and paste, the, the fruit and veggie, the superstore, yeah. that side there was the main. Um, but uh, we've been struggling a, a lot in uh, the market, but yeah, I guess I'm going to it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. I think small steps, you know. Yes. Uh, and the word on the streets as well is that you're looking to expand into processing, you know, going into Viennas and other poultry products. What brought about that thinking and um, what's the vision behind that? Yeah, so the whole idea was to expand because you can't really be looking at selling a chicken live as we had started before. We were, telling, we were growing them for about six weeks and then we, we either go to your streets and sell on the streets or your markets on, the, on weekends where you go to your fanties or your, your food markets. So we saw that the gap between um, the processing and the live is, is really huge and there's a lot of money to be made from processing mm. so that's why we wanted to actually go into that especially because we are trying to move as well from small scale to commercial mm. so we cannot say we have about 20,000 birds and then you are going to strictly sell them on the streets you want to actually do different type of things like processing like um, doing Vienna sausages and then selling it to your chisanyamas your prime prize as a whole chicken and then putting it into pick and pays as pieces and and so forth, yeah. Yeah, I like the fact that you mentioned earlier on to say that you work together with Mzo, you're both learning from each other as a livestock farmer and as a, um, a, a, a crop farmer. Do you ever get clients who come directly onto the farm, maybe want to buy chicken as well as spinach and they go home with that bread of baskets? Tell, talk us through this collaboration between you two, especially where markets are concerned. Yeah, so what we normally do is we get your walk-ins like we just had a few hours ago 
where people are actually coming into the, into the farm and they, they actually want chickens, they actually want um, vegetables and we actually do our own markets on weekends as well. So we are trying to get the word out there as much as we can so that everybody around us knows of what we have and what we can do. So within our growth, it only makes sense for us to, 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 to grow each other in that way so that not only are we learning from each other but we are sharing markets as well. Yeah, yeah. So maybe from both of you, uh, to sum up uh, this conversation, I just want to know how do you think, in your view, government could assist small-scale farmers like yourself in accessing uh, broader and wider markets? Yeah, so what we would love to get from the government is actually more land. Because as small scale as small scale farmers, we we can't really do a lot. It's more of a hand to mouth thing on a small scale. So we would love to get more land and get support in electricity, water, feed. Um, if we can even get day old at times, because there's a huge shortage in that. As we are doing, we are working ourselves backwards, where we started putting chickens inside coops and selling to selling as vendors. Now that we are processing, we would like to actually go into the commercial space where we are selling, where we are rearing more than 5,000, where we are rearing more than 10,000 or 20,000 birds a day, yeah. or rather a month. Yeah. Mzo, how do you think government can assist you in ex expanding different markets? See, I have to now. Because, for example, now, we by by 10 tunnel, we only have 150 punches, then customer like, I'm a shop, I'm a cool. As of tell you, you need about uh, 500 punches every Thursday, then you can't supply them. You supply them this week, you jump at the following week while you are waiting for the spinach, which is cool. And then, so it, it, if it's not all I'm slab, I'm cool more than this one. Uh, Manzi, Casey, then yeah, then even the skill, we also need the skills, so it's a marketing. While you see, see corner, like see ends, a lap, see corner, corner, but we, we need uh, uh, more, more skills. Next time you buy fresh produce or live chickens, think about the farmers like Untlantla that are making all this possible. Continue to contribute positively to the sector by supporting these small scale farmers. My name is Mbali Nwoko and this was The Farming Show by Private Property. See you next time. <laughs>